let me tell you a story I know All about trains and where they go All about trains and what they do All about trains For All About Trains, Chuck Daly. Today we're on the Sioux Line layout that belongs to Richard Cam. The Sioux Line is a large railroad layout. It's in a, uh, about a room the size of a two-car garage. But the Sioux Line is more than just Richard's layout. It's also what's known as a group layout. That means that more than one person can operate it. Usually in this case, five or six people are needed. Richard, just what is the whole background with your layout? Well, Chuck, first of all, the layout is really the home for about 10 or 11 modelers in this area, many of which don't have a layout of their own, and they kind of use this as a substitute. They come over every Wednesday night, and we operate a model transportation system. We don't really run trains or run toy trains around the base of a Christmas tree. We try to do the same things a real railroad would do. Now, to begin with, the first thing we developed as a group was the concept about the railroad. Why did it exist and where does it exist? Let's take a look at a map and I'll show you a little bit about the Sioux Line. Here we see it, the southern uh, central portion of the United States, the state of Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, Oklahoma. In yellow we've marked the theoretical route of the Sioux Line. It begins in Kansas City, heads down to Fort Smith, Arkansas, there's a branch that runs out to the west to bring us in a lot of western traffic. Then it continues southward through Texarkana, Arkansas, Surreyport, Louisiana, Alexandria, Louisiana, Baton Rouge, and down to New Orleans. Now this would be a railroad of some 800 to 1,000 miles, and that would be too big for even me to model in this space. So what we've done is limited ourselves to what we call the Louisiana Division of the railroad, specifically the portion running from Shreveport, Louisiana, down to Alexandria. If you look carefully, I've added some names onto this road map. These are the theoretical stations or stops of the Sioux Line Railroad as it moves from Shreveport to Alexandria. Now let's take this map down and I'll show you a little bit more detail about the railroad itself. I have a friend who's also a model railroader and an architect and he's drawn me up a blueprint of my railroad. It sits in a 24 by 24 foot room. There's a single door into the room with a lift out section. We drop that into place when we start operating. There are wide aisleways that allow you to walk along the edge of the railroad and remain with your train at all times. Nowhere in the room is the operator more than a hand's length away from the train as he's operating it. Here's the northern end of the railroad, the Shreveport area, depicted by the Union Street Yard, Victoria Station. The Union Street Yard is the freight yard. That's where all the freight cars would be, the boxcars, gondolas, hoppers. The Victoria Station area is the passenger station. That's where you might see a coach, a diner, or a sleeper car sitting waiting to be serviced. So we have both of those functions there. Let's take a look at the actual trackage in the Union Street Yard area. Chuck, this is the Union Street Yard area. Notice that it's primarily just a conglomeration of tracks. All these tracks are used by the yard master to sort cars out. When a train comes in, it's broken down, and each car is sorted out as to its future destination. Then the yard master pulls the cars from that track, puts them together, and forms a train. This is the busiest part of the railroad and represents the part just south of Shreveport, Louisiana. Here we see the major facilities at the south end of Union Street Yard. The yard office, the track just in front of it moving back to the car repair facility, the yard switch engines, and the yard tower. This is the control center for the yard, and all the turnouts are controlled from that tower, allowing the switcher to perform its function. If we move southward from the Union Street Yard area, we enter the 9th District. The northern terminus of the 9th District is Taylortown. It marks the division point between the yard area and the district proper. The first major town is Sioux City. We have a main line, a storage siding, and a passing siding or alternate main, as well as an interchange with one of the other members of Nalakra, the Arkansas, Louisiana, and Western. 
If we move southward from Sioux City, we enter the town of Roberts Crossing. A single spur here serves logging camp number nine. Now, surely, if it's number nine, there must be eight others. You don't have to model them, but you just know they have to be there. Proceeding on southward, we cross the Louisiana Nashville Railway, another member of Nalacra, and enter the southern end of the 9th District, the town of Quincy. This is one of the most complicated towns on the railroad, having industrial spurs on either end of town, requiring runaround moves, as well as straight switch moves. Now let's take a look at the towns that make up the 9th District. Chuck, here we are in the upper end of the 9th District in the town of Sioux City. It's basically a long uh, siding. It's one of the simplest towns. There's a track over here for holding cars or car storage. There's a freight main line through the center of town, a passenger main line which loops off to the side, and if we continue up this way, we see the interchange with the Arkansas, Louisiana, and Western, another member of Nalacra. This is a fairly simple town to operate, but it's not the simplest town in the 9th District. Let's go down to Roberts Crossing and take a look at the simplest town on the railroad. Here we see the town of Roberts Crossing. The main line moves from the right up towards the top of the scene. There's a single spur moving off on the left side. This serves the logging camp, specifically logging camp number nine. Here the primary industry is timber, raw wood products, which are loaded here and move southward. Chuck, now let's move out of the 9th district into the 8th district. Proceeding southward out of Quincy, we would pass an unmarked station known to the operators as Camelot. Then we would proceed into Purgatory. Now this town got its name because once you've been to Tur Purgatory, you know where you're going next. It's another very complicated switching town with a lot of track work in here, many spurs and many industries to be served. As you proceed southward, you cross the Big Bend and move into the town of Oilwell Corner. This town has one principal product, oil. There are oil storage tanks on this end of town, an oil field supply company, here a team track, and on the south end, there's a small refinery. What's a team track? A team track is a spur or siding where any sort of merchandise may be unloaded. It's a general service track. There's no specific type of car that goes there. If we proceed southward out of Oilwell Corner, we reach the southern end of the 8th District at North Switch. Now this switch happens to be at the north end of Morgan City. It's a single spur which serves a car loading facility, an oil merchandiser, and a miscellaneous parts company. Chuck, if we move out of the 8th District, before we move into the 7th District, we hit an intermediate town, a reclassification town, of Morgan City. In this area, we have an industrial park on the back side with a number of local industries. The main line passes by the town, and in the southern end of the town, there is the reclassification yard proper. What do you mean by reclassification yard? By the time the train has moved through both the 9th and 8th districts, the cars have become fairly jumbled up. They're no longer in a nice, specific order. So the train is brought into this yard area, and the cars are reclassified by town. All the towns, all the cars going to the first town are placed together, then the second, then the third. The train is put back together and proceeds southward into the seventh district. This is the southernmost portion of the railroad which we actually model. It begins at the south end of Morgan City in Cruz Siding, follows a winding main line into the town of Maryville, which is primarily a pulpwood facility and serves the sister town of Lake Hamilton, which is now a paper mill. This is the newest area of the railroad. We've just worked on this area, and many portions of it are still in the planning stage. The Sioux Line then continues southward on to Alexandria, but we don't model that portion of the railroad, just as we didn't model anything north of the Union Street Yard area in Shreveport. Chuck, now that we've had a look at the overall physical layout in the Sioux Line, let's take a look at some of the other things. The first thing I'd like to show you is how we communicate with each other on the Sioux Line. Chuck, here's our dispatcher's panel. Notice, first of all, it's a fairly complicated panel. Let me show you a few things about it, though. The railroad runs from Union Street on the north end, down southward through Quincy, then it restarts Camelot, Purgatory, and on through Morgan City. The white line indicates the main line, in some cases a single branch, in some cases dual main. 
The black lines indicate sidings, spurs, or passing tracks. The red trackage are the yard areas, while the blue trackage indicates trackage for another member of Nolacra, in this case, the Louisiana Nashville Railway. Notice the little red lights here. They indicate block occupancy. Whenever a train moves into an area, one of these lights will come on and indicate to the dispatcher where that train is. The smaller green lights indicate turnout position. Whenever one of those lights comes on, the turnout is in the curved position as shown on the board. Not necessarily physically on the layout, but as shown on the board. The other thing to mention are these lights and the switches. These are our, part of our telephone communications network. If I want to call an area, say Sioux City, I throw the switch this way and it rings the phone at Sioux City. In reality, all it does is turn a light on on that telephone. Likewise, if someone is calling me, this light will flash to indicate an incoming call rather than ringing and making a lot of noise. Chuck, the dispatcher can communicate in several different ways. If you'll take that headset there, he can use that and communicate through the standard telephones, just like a telephone operator. Mm. Or he can use this. We've just started using these on the Sioux line. This is a radio linkage, which he wears a lightweight headset. He takes the control box and places it on his belt. And now he's got hands-free operation and radio communication. He no longer is confined just to this dispatcher's panel. Get can move about the room if need be. Are these little panels or are these little headsets easy to come by? These are standard things I found in a, uh, just a hobby magazine, uh, wrote off and got a couple of them, and they've done great for us. Uh, let's look at some of the other ways that a dispatcher can communicate with train crews. Here's one of the ways the dispatcher communicates with the mainline crews. The current signal says both the main lines are blocked, but the siding is open. In this particular situation, both the north and southbound mains are blocked, as indicated by the red signals, while the siding is open, as indicated by the yellow signal. If we change the turnouts, we see that now the siding is blocked, as indicated by the red signal. The southbound main is clear, as indicated by the green signal, while the northbound main is blocked, as indicated by the red signal. If we change the turnout positions once again, we see now that both the siding and southbound main are blocked, as indicated by the red signal, while the northbound main is clear, as indicated by the green signal. Here we see another form of communication. This is a turnout controlled by the mainline crews. When the signal is in this position on the switch stand, the turnout is set to the siding. When it's thrown to the main line, the signal gives this indication. Chuck, next I'd like to show you some of the forms we use here on the Sioux line. First of all, we noticed that the real railroads made up rule books and timetables. So just like the Kansas City Southern, one of the major railroads in this area, we made up our own rule book and our own timetable. In addition, we've created some other forms. First of all, we have a form for the dispatcher. This is actually a worksheet for the dispatcher it has in the center all of the stations along the railroad. Each train, whether it's southbound or northbound, can be plotted or placed on this timetable. At the end of a session, you have a sheet of paper that'll look like this, because these forms are not for display, but for active use. So we'll have lots of trains that have moved through the district during this session. This actually represents two operating sessions on the Sioux line. In addition, We've created a number of pieces of paperwork. Here's a daily worksheet. This happens to be for the Union Street Yard operator. In this case, it gives the time of arrival or departure of each of the trains. If the train is inbound, the cars are set out in red, and it tells him where to put those cars in his yard. If the train happens to be outbound or leaving the yard, then those cars will be printed in blue, and it will tell him where he can pick them up from and where they're destined to so that he can properly block or place the cars in the proper order. This sheet is then used by the local operator, be the Union Street Yard operator, 9th District operator, 8th District operator, Morgan City operator, or the 7th District operator. Not to be outdone, we also made up some forms for the mainline crews. First of all, we have a little clipboard they can carry with them. 
The outer color identifies the radio cab number. It could be blue, yellow, red, or green. If we look down here, we see times and train numbers and a little shorthand notice of what the train does. This train leaves Union Street and is the tank train. 112 leaves Union Street and is a local freight. On through, if it's a passenger train, it tells him what stations it stops at and how long it stops. Now, he has a piece of paper he attaches to this clipboard. This happens to be the switch list for train 112, southbound, leaving at 4.03 a.m. At Union Street, he picks up the following cars, and all of his pickups will be in blue. The cars that he's to set out or leave in a town will be in red. The town name itself is printed in black. Now, immediately, this led to the question of what happens if a car gets put out in the wrong town. So we devised a form for rerouting a car. If a car happens to come into town, the operator finds out it should not be there, he fills out one of these and routes it to the proper destination. Occasionally, just like everyone else, we have a car that malfunctions or for some other reason doesn't work properly. So we've also made out a little card like this. This is a bad order card. It tells what defect occurred, which car it was, whether it was loaded or empty, what train it was in, the date, and who found that problem. This is placed on the car and stays with it until the corrections are made by management, mainly me. One thing we found is a lot of railroads kind of have this philosophy. Mm. Look, but don't touch. Well, here on the Sioux line, we like to handle things and work with the things. Dispatch. OK, extra 49 north, you have clearance in the purgatory. Uh, clear with the purgatory district switcher so he can route you around uh, that extra 123. OK. Paul, what was that call all about that you just had? OK, what I did was uh, this is one of our fast freights, and uh, I had to reroute him around this train here. This train is waiting on him at Purgatory. And what I did was he called up and asked for clearance leaving Orwell Corner. And so I told him to just ask the Purgatory District switcher for clearance into Purgatory. Shreveport, Louisiana is the center of the no locker activity. Uh, many in the locker roads send traffic into Shreveport, and we further it south by putting it into other trains. Now, in Nolacra, those are the private roads of the people who operate this transportation system. Yes, the North Louisiana Connecting Railroad Association. Okay. So uh, what do I do when I come to you? I've signed my little uh, form uh, from Paul Shattuck, the dispatcher, and I'm ready to run a train. Well, Chuck, we're going to let you take the uh, throttle. The throttles on the Sioux line are converted airplane radio control units. This one's been remounted in another box. And if you will connect this to your belt. Now this is just, no, it's very light. That, the receiver on that radio is connected directly into the CTC-16 unit. Okay. And it comes out here at this yellow plug. Tonight we're going to be taking 327 here. Now that's? These this, three units these, together, oh, okay. but our lead unit's 327. Oh, is that? Oh, okay. Well, to select that engine, we plug our radio color into the engine number. Okay. In this case, 705 is the powered unit. Oh, I see. All right. Okay. So now I'm, what do now I do you now? you have control of the engine. All right. Cleared the magnet. I'm on my way. Now, where am I going to go next? Okay. The dispatcher told us to meet train 49 in Sioux City. So you okay. need to go into Sioux City and stop clear. Am I, am I into Sioux City now? Yes. OK, what do I do? I you just need keep... to pull up down here. Just before the uh, signal bridge? Yes, yeah, stop at the signal. That'll do. OK. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. Do I back up a little? I'm OK, I guess. You're all right. This is train 49 on the siding. OK. As, as soon as he leaves town, we'll call the dispatcher for clearance to uh, switch the south end of town. OK. What I've been doing is waiting for train 49 and 112 to get out of my way, because I've got three cars here that goes from my town of Orwell, uh, 
Sioux City to Quincy. Okay. But they're on the wrong end of my engine. Oh, these Rock Island? These rock, three Rock Island cars here? So I need to run around them. So what I'm going to do is back up and make a run around on the main line. A, a run around here? You're just actually really just going to go around? Going to run around those three cars. I need to get the cars on the correct end of my engine. So I'll be pulling them ahead of me and, or behind me mm -hmm. going to the next town. These cars are three cars that needs to be transferred from Sioux City to Quincy. So what I'll do is pull my car, train back to the uncoupling ramp and I'll set out these three Rock Island cars. Okay, we'll back up clear of our switch. Okay, we're gonna pull to the south end of Sioux City now. And we're gonna take our caboose with us to Quincy. Because mm. we are a district switcher and we have main line running. So we've gotta pull up the main line now. We'll set our caboose out on the main line. We'll set a run to the other end of town. Okay. Set our caboose out. Let's walk on down okay. a little way so we can see where we're going. Okay. We got another ramp here. We're going to uncouple. Okay. We'll run on through now. Come back down the passing siding and pick up our three Rock Island cars. Now why couldn't we just leave those cars where they were and let somebody else take care of them? Well, that shows as a local move in our district, which is when we work Sioux City to Quincy. My district consists of Sioux City, Roberts Crossing, and Quincy, three towns located along the railroad. I do the local switching for those three towns. There will be a local face that will come through and set out cars okay. for industries located on this, uh, in this district. Now we're backing up on a caboose and we have completed our runaround move when we get our caboose. Well, that seemed pretty simple. So we can head on out now, we'll be going on to Quincy. And here, just as long as we get in the clear before we get run over by another train in 45 minutes. In our last episode, we've shown you the culmination of our first 12 episodes. Model railroading is a hobby that is never finished. But remember, the end result should be the eventual operation of your model transportation system. Join us. Well, I worked all over this country, over this great land of ours. I've been in a lot of places. I've smelled a lot of flowers. I've got money in my pocket. I've got clothes on my back. I've seen a lot of good times looking down the railroad track. But when I hear a train whistle echoing through the hills, I'm going to hang my light on a blue caboose and highball out of here. Blow that whistle, Barry. Blow that whistle, sweet. Make it echo through the hills. Put me and Jim to sleep. Watch out for a broken rail. Just keep her on the track. Blow that whistle, Barry. Let them know we're coming back. Now we go to work for a railroad almost every day. Hauling freight to Arkansas and places by the way. We got a jungle lunch and a coffee pot and a smile on our face. Got a clear track, good engineer, so what more could I say? Got my order signed, got an air test made, got a brakeman by my side. So let's hang our light on a blue caboose and ride, ride, ride. Blow that whistle, Barry, blow that whistle, sweet. Make it echo through the hills, put me and Jim to sleep. Watch out for a broken rail, just keep her on the track. Blow that whistle, Barry, let them know we're coming back. Well, I worked all over this country, over this great land of ours. I've been in a lot of places, I've smelled a lot of flowers. I've got money in my pocket, I've got clothes on my back. I've seen a lot of good times looking down the railroad track, but when I hear a train whistle echoing through the hills, I'm going to hang my light on a blue caboose and highball out of here. Blow that whistle, Barry, blow that whistle, sweet. Make it echo through the hills, put me and Jim to sleep. Watch out for a broken rail, just keep her on the track. Blow that whistle, Barry, let them know we're coming back. 
Now I go to work for a railroad almost every day. Hauling freight to Arkansas and places by the way. We got a jungle lunch and a coffee pot and a smile on our face. We got a clear track, good engineer, so what more could I say? Got my order signed, got an air test made, got a brakeman by my side. So let's hang our line on a blue caboose and ride, ride, ride. Blow that whistle, Mary, blow that whistle, sweet. Make it echo through the hills, put me and Jim to sleep. Watch out for a broken rail, just keep her on the track. Blow that whistle, Barry, let them know we're coming back. Blow that whistle, Barry, blow that whistle, sweet. Make it echo through the hills, put me and Jim to sleep. Watch out for a broken rail, just keep her on the track. Blow that whistle, Barry, let them know we're coming back. Catch Late Night America tonight at 11 for Pete Seeger's slant on the civil rights movement. Ralph Nader's on board with some novel consumer ideas and Newsweek correspondent Eleanor Cliff will discuss the top news stories of 1989. All of them and your phone calls on Late Night America with Dennis Holy, 11 o'clock this evening. The Channel 56 auction begins April 20th, and our go-getters are now seeking auction items. What should you donate? How about... Baby clothes. Cars. Fishing tackle. Dolls. Appliances. Cellular phones. VCR. Pet supplies. Tools. Antiques. Vacations. Kitchen sinks. Whatever you choose to donate, the auction can use it. To donate, watch for the go-getter in your neighborhood or call 876-8350. This year, do it yourself with a brand new season of Home Time. Do it yourself with the new season of Home Time. Saturday afternoon at 3.30. Health Matters, the television series that can help you improve your health and perhaps prolong your life. We'll report on the latest advances in modern medicine with profiles of both everyday and extraordinary people to see how their courage and determination make them winners. Their stories, along with the advice of health care experts, can make a difference in your life. So watch Health Matters each week, your complete source of medical news and health information. As I am a senior, I work part-time, but I...